Stop team. I would like to tell you about a technique that is very, very useful to understand yourself and others. It's called the Yuhari window. And it has been created by Joseph Luft and Harrington Ingham. I always have to look up those names. And these two guys, they were psychologists. They have created the Yuhari window. Their first names have actually, a combination of their first name have, you know, made up the name Yuhari. So Joseph and Harrington. What is this about? It's a technique that helps you to understand the relationship to yourself and to others. And it is a quadrant that are describing what is known to yourself and known to others. And I would right away like to go to that square, which is known to others and not known to ourselves. This is our blind spots. You can imagine, right? There is areas that are known to yourself and not known to others. These are all the secrets we keep and that, you know, if you want to look at it from an iceberg perspective, then it's all the things that are hidden and internal and not visible to the public. But there's also this quadrant, which is not known to ourselves, but known to others. It's because we are who we are, right? We are inside ourselves. So we cannot at the same time observe ourselves from the outside, but that's what others are able to do. And that's why it is so immensely important that we have a way to compare our self perception with the way how others see us. And that is the reason why we need honest and open feedback from others, from others, from people who do not have any kind of an interest to tell us something that is not the truth. Got it? We need honest and open feedback from others. Every one of us needs that so that we can actually see ourselves in the way who we are, in the way we are perceived by others. That's the only way to find out. And that's the only way that we can adjust and actually come across, be perceived by others in the way we want. And only others can tell us how we are perceived right now. Maybe you can see a mirror yourself uh, right now as well, what I've been described is that we need others as we need a mirror to see ourselves. When you work in teams, when you work in a team format in any kind of a setting where you work with others, whatever is the name of that collaboration, you can get feedback from other people on how you are perceived and you can find out what you're good at and what you're not so good at, right? That's why we need to connect to our openness to learn, to our learning aptitude, which allows us to step back, put our egos to the side and be able to receive, to listen to that very essential feedback that we need from others, right? Nobody can be perfect in everything. So every human being has his or her talents, his unique abilities and competences. We are actually all unique. We are bringing something very, very special to this world. That's why you are here. And I believe it's actually the meaning of our lives to find out what is that special purpose we are here for. And what are those strengths, what are those abilities that we brought that we are still, you know, building and growing throughout our lives? What are those abilities that allow us to do what, to solve what? 
we need that feedback from others. That's why the STOP team is such a fundamental basis that you have to create with the people you work with. When you manage to get into those, I know there are sensible topics, you can really grow as a human being, as a professional, as a team member, in every aspect that you can think of. And all of us, every one of your team members will have the opportunity to do that for themselves and for others. It's connected, it's deeply connected and integrated. Integrated, it's a basic element that just naturally wants to happen if we allow it to happen. Now, what gets in the way? Our egos get in the way, the way we have programmed, some beliefs that we have adopted from our context, from the education system we have been, from the people around us who raised us. Now, I'm not saying that this is a bad thing. It was useful. All of the things we have learned in our lives have been useful at some point in time. We have to become aware of what are those beliefs and habits and deep down underlying, you know, much deeper beliefs that we carry with us in something like a pack pack that we have collected throughout our lives that may become an obstacle in the present or in the future. We need to be aware of what are those soft factors or actually those human factors that are making us to be as a person, that are making our identity, that are part of who we are so that we can choose to let some of those go maybe because we understand that they don't serve us anymore. So in the STOP team, we are diving into these topics in much more depth that are helpful for us in the context of team building, in the context of understanding why some teams don't work, out the failure of teams. I've not touched that topic so let's say clearly yet, but this is actually what it is all about. And I'm sure you had that in the mind listening to me until this point. A lot of the collaborations or a lot of the teams we work in don't work out the way we want them to. And we need to find ways to understand our role in that and what we can learn from it for the next time we are starting into the development of an idea in a new team setup. This is the part where we are exercising, practicing the ability to learn about ourselves because we have understood that Learning about ourselves is actually the key for anything in life. 